A young man who was suffering from financial problems faced the world at the dawn of magical era. We follow the journey of this young man as he learns more about himself and provides for his adoptive sister after awakening while becoming stronger and exploring a completely untouched area of the world as it undergoes a major change. On a dark rainy night, a lady is running away from some armed men with her baby when she ends up at the door of a random woman's house. The lady's physical condition wasn't good, thus she handed the baby to the woman. She disappears after leaving the baby with a walnut necklace, and we move 18 years in the future to see the same baby turned into a young man attending a festival. The young man's name is Lu Shu, and he was out with his pretty but adorable little sister, Lu Xiaoyu. Shu buys Xiaoyu some treats, and as they are walking around, some rumors about people with powers appearing are going around the crowd. The siblings come across a performer displaying some fire tricks that makes Shu wonder whether this is just a trick or an actual superpower. The show wraps up and Xiao Yu tempts Shu to sneak backstage so they can learn the secret of the fire tricks as well and make some money. Even though Shu is initially reluctant, he finds the matter interesting and the two sneak in. They witness the same performer being tranquilized by some men who catch the kids sneaking. The men introduce themselves as police, and even though Shu is aware that something is wrong, he goes with the flow to escape the scene. Another stranger is waiting for the siblings outside, but the kids just ignore him and head home. As the two are walking, Xiao Yu seems to be interested in superpowers, but she doubts that her brother would even attain one, as she thinks that Shu is really weak. Before reaching their place, the step-siblings greet Aunt Lin, who was the same woman who raised Shu, and head inside to decide on what to eat. Xiao Yu seems to find anything that Shu cooks to be lacking taste, and she convinces her brother to get some noodles for her from the store nearby. Shu is walking down the road, remembering all the times Xiao Yu was there for him, when he ends up getting hit by a truck while crossing the road. He starts to bleed out heavily, but just when it seemed like this was it for him, his walnut necklace starts to glow, and with appearance of some sort of interface, he gets back to health with a sudden awakening of power. Shu stands up to scare the crap out of the driver, and while completing the errand, he notices random numbers on top of the heads of people. The guy makes it back home and jumps into the shower to surprisingly find not a single mark on his body. He's thinking about whether he has now awakened or not, when he comes to realize that the points he was getting were from the negative emotions of people, and that he can exchange them to gamble in the interface that is available to him. Of course, Shu doesn't let such an opportunity go to waste, and he spends all his points to get a celestial fruit and a scroll with twinkle twinkle little star on it that takes him to an area with celestial stars. Shu finally understands how his abilities might work in one way or another, and he is watching the news with Xiao Yu when he realizes that the recent fire accident is actually at a place close to their house. Shu decides to have a look outside in order to settle his curiosity, but he is left shocked when he finds the same man from the festival looking for someone. Shu ends up getting spotted by those men, and he barely gets away by utilizing a basket of vegetables that he had found on the rooftop by chance. After getting down, Shu heads to have a word with Xiao Yu, but a man falling in their yard interrupts them. Shu heads outside to check up on the situation, and Xiao Yu follows him outside even after Shu tells her to stay put. The kids find the same performer from earlier outside, and Shu suspects him of being involved in the mall incident. After catching on to the man's facade instantly, Shu deliberately pisses the guy off to earn some points, and Shu's words make the guy so mad that he tries to use superpowers to burn Shu. Shu ends up being unaffected, and after the man escapes the scene, he reveals his awakening to Xiao Yu. Later in his room, Shu buys and eats a golden fruit from the shop in his interface to visit the celestial realm again and witness a new star getting lit. In order to tackle their financial issues, Shu is selling some eggs that Xiao Yu got for him the next morning when he is seen by some classmates and this raises some awkwardness among them. While others had walked by quietly, a loudmouthed guy named Liu Li starts making fun of Shu and even though Shu is unaffected, he convinces Li into buying his whole stock. Being a rich kid, Lee carries no cash, so a popular girl named Kao from school pays Shu in his place. The awakening instances had been growing at a quite a quick rate, and at school, Shu overhears how the awakened are being ranked from A to F. Shu assumes that he must be just F rank when the news of an awakened student causes chaos in school. Shu heads the check as well, and on his way, gets a feeling that Kao from earlier is also awakened. The guy reaches the scene where the student is threatening to throw a teacher down the roof. 
He sees the chance and while farming point starts to spew law knowledge that ultimately saves the day. Shu heads back to class to come to know how the students are supposed to go through a compulsory blood test and he is coming back home after school when he notices the same stranger from the festival having a word with Aunt Lin. Shu heads home to nurse Xiao Yu who was going through a fever and he successfully treats her with some of the fruits that he got from gambling his points. The next day at school, the same man who was after the fire performer arrives as the new instructor of Fei. And while Shu gets called out for having powers officially, we move to a faraway land where an unknown man is in a battle against multiple opponents all at once. The school continues for Shu with the transfer of a new student named Jiang Shu Yi. Shu Yi is apparently a boy despite his feminine looks, and as he sits down next to Shu, Shu wastes no time in making fun of him and jokes about him looking like a woman. After the boring school is over, Shu heads to attend a special class for the Awakened with Shu Yi, and he succeeds in straight up annoying instructor Fei with his absurd answers to a question about the sodium potassium alloy. It is revealed further that this substance helps in figuring out the ranks of the Awakened, and after class ends, we get to know how Shu had been assigned to the F rank. Back at home, Shu is attempting to summon pancakes on Xiao Yu's request instead of the new tofu he got from the shop, when he randomly summons a contract that shows the celestial map to Xiao Yu, awakening her as well. With his sister now awakened, Shu comes up with a genius plan to make some bread and heads to his usual selling spot while denying training from an old man in the neighborhood. Shu had started selling the tofu that he got from his menu and despite the horrific smell, the food somehow sold a whole lot and made Shu a ton of money. As his business was doing pretty well, Shu gained a second golden celestial fruit and after eating this one, he saw his celestial map glowing again as he earned the ability to summon a sword for himself now. A few days after Shu Yi's enrollment, Shu is in class when the news of a recent bank robbery is going around and Li is willing to play the hero, forming a superhero crime catching group or something along those lines. Shu learns about the strongest rank named Ting and later in Awakened class, comes across something called the Spirit Stones for the very first time. Shu figures that Mr. Fei's way of teaching is not for him, when his celestial map reacts violently with the use of a Spirit Stone. The next day at school, Shu hilariously humiliates Liu Li in an arm wrestling match and after securing a hell a lot of points, comes to know about cults or sects among the Awakened named the Earth and Heavenly Network. Later on, Shu is back at home chilling when he suddenly notices something going on outside. He looks out of the window and sees Ting with his own two eyes visiting the old man whom Shu had been rejecting in the past couple of days. Ting was actually there to recruit the old man into returning to the battlefield, but the old head seemed to be more interested in spending his retirement years in peace. After Ting leaves, Shu concludes that the old man is worth learning from and on the next day, he asks him about some lessons before making some more points after telling the master to babysit the grumpy Xiao Yu. A day later at school, Shu was watching a recent altercation between a gang and awakened people before leaving when he comes across Kao, who is rumored to have the potential of an A rank. Kao makes eye contact with Shu and back at home, Xiao Yu is going through a study session with Master Li, where she does not seem to be the easiest to tutor. She arrives back at his place and the old man tells him to wear some weight for better physical training. Shu shocks the old man when he just absolutely toys with 300 pounds of weight clothes and the training skips right to sword practice. Shu starts swinging the sword and with time and proper instructions, his body starts to become one with his sword. Shu had swung his sword a thousand times by nighttime, and before wrapping, the old man asked them whether he would bear the responsibility that comes with being his disciple. Shu reveals his priority is to provide for Xiao Yu and the master remarks how he is still ready to teach Shu even if he won't become his disciple. On the next day, Xiao Yu is behaving better in her lessons with the old man when a man named Xue Jin visits to recruit him to the Heavenly Network. Master Lu gives the same answer that he gave to Ting and Xue Jin leaves after giving Xu a stare. The two share some information about Xue Jin's rank and before the tutoring session wraps up, he tells the siblings to take the sodium potassium test just to know their real rank. The two do take the test at their place, and while at first both of them show the A rank potential, something unexpected happens when Shu's sample suddenly changes to a color that was never seen before. Shu lies about his level with the old man that night, and later on in his room, he unlocks a new ability of defense after leveling up his celestial map. 
Xiao Yu has also broken through her level cap, and she gains the ability to control dead spirits. The sibling tests the ability on some ants and birds before Shu takes his sister to the slaughterhouse to obtain a pig spirit. At home, Shu destroys the pig while conducting some experiments and makes Xiao Yu really mad. The guy does make amendments afterwards, but while he is hoping to buy the house they are renting right now, a sudden feeling draws the sibling outside to witness Mr. Fei in a fight with a D-rank thug. Despite only being D-rank, the thugs put up a good fight against Mr. Fei's black coats, and by the time the police get involved, Shu sends Xiao Yu back to safety so he can get involved in the issue himself. The black coats successfully corner the thugs and even manage to stab the tall leader, but he refuses to go down easily. Shu was also nearby, and even though his aura saved him from giving away his identity, the black coats still got into a fight with him. Both the tall leader and Shu defeat the black coats as they get into a fight themselves. Shu uses his new ability to first shatter the bones in the tall guy's arm, and afterwards delivers the finishing blow with a celestial dagger. Shu heads back home to Xiao Yu, who examines his injuries before the two leave outside to get some more spirits. They are stopped by Master Li, but the two just excuse themselves, remarking that they are going to have dinner. Shu takes Xiao Yu to the same site where the fight had happened, and she recruits the tall thug to summon later, as right now, she was low on energy. The two are about to head home, but at Xiao Yu's request, they agree to visit a restaurant where the siblings share an emotional moment that bonds the two really close together, as Shu promises Xiao Yu that he would buy her their own house. While the siblings are out, the heavenly network is shown to be already on the move, as they are onto the mysterious blue aura guy whose identity is still unclear. The network assumed him to be C rank and assigned the B rank commander to look further into the case. While the heavenly network was on the move, Shu's tofu business is not doing so well, as he is not really getting any negative emotional points, but since the guy is so sly, he still earns some by feeding off of people's disappointment. The following night, Xiao Yu wakes up suddenly after succeeding with her summoning attempts, and she heads straight to show the tall thug's spirit to Shu. She scares Shu for a moment and remarks how strong the spirit is, since it can utilize the original thug's D-level powers as well. The little girl further reveals that since she can see through the spirit's memories, she also knows where the thugs had hidden the loot from their last robbery. Xiao Yu is excited to dig up the money, but Shu tells her to leave such illegal ways of making money and instead leave the money problem for the house up to him. Even though Xiao Yu had accepted it, for now, Shu still stresses about a resource for money that night and gets curious about the prices of certain spiritual lands. The next day, Shu earns some more points right upon his arrival, and he sits down with Shu Yi to ask about the questions from last night. Shu Yi reveals how these lands are related to spiritual awakening, as they might benefit awakened people in certain ways. Shu Yi continues to provide some confidential information as he reveals how the school will be getting a new supply of spirit stones soon. Fei, who now has an arm broken, is remembering training even among the black coats and how the B rank Yi Xian was just terrible at efficiency. This was especially a really big deal since the students were assembled outside for the ceremony of the school's new director that just happened to be Yi Xian as well. The fat guy was already late to arrive, and Shu makes use of this offer to gain some points. Yi Xian further moves to even have a word with the awakened class, where he reveals some intel about the C-rank guy from that earlier incident before informing them about the merit set for the distribution of the spirit stones. Shu gains two spirit stones despite being F-rank, and after the class, he takes Shu Yi to a corner where he asks him about a black market for these spirit stones. Even though Shu Yi is reluctant at first, he agrees to give Shu information and makes a few phone calls to sell Shu's stones for 120,000 yen each. Shu remembers how far he had come from once begging to get money for merely buying snacks for Xiao Yu. While Shu was busy sorting out the money problems, Yi Xian reached Master Li to conduct some investigation. Upon hearing the culprit being good at swords, Master Li snaps at Yi Xian for doubting one of his disciples and sends Xiao Yu back home as it was time for Shu's arrival. Upon Shu's entrance at his place, both he and Xiao Yu wish to share some stuff with each other. Xiao Yu asks about the heavenly network while Shu gifts Xiao Yu a new phone, and shows her his current account balance. Shu remarks that he would now be able to use this money to buy the house they are renting. Xiao Yu has this belief on her face, and she ends up bursting into tears from the happiness that had finally come their way after years of suffering. That night, Shu reaches the next level in his celestial map, 
But on the other hand, something seems to be off with Xiao Yu's spiritual powers. Some time passes by, and Shu finally collects the property papers that make him the house owner. Afterwards, Shu receives a text from Xiao Yu telling him to join her at some dinner. But he ends up telling no to her as the awakened class was told to get together at a short notice. The students that were assembled are loaded into trucks, and as the crew is on their way, Shu Yi reveals how they are headed for a newly opened ruin in order to conquer it and attain highly valuable items. Shu earns some more points along the way, and after reaching the camp, the class has an attendance with Mr. Fei, who stresses the importance of this mission by revealing how this is confidential to the point that the students cannot even discuss it without getting legally charged. With a sudden challenge to conquer a ruin standing in front of him, Lu Shu's quest to get stronger and conquer life continue as great danger is awaiting him on his way ahead. And that would be it for today's recap. If you want to watch the part 2, please comment down below. And if you enjoyed it, drop us a like and subscribe for more. See you in the next one. Peace.